Let me just give you an uh, introduction to 5G Futures uh, and the work that we do at the GSMA. Um, I, I head it up and we're trying to do the transition between 4G uh, and 5G. Uh, the commercialization of that transition from the standards and the specifications that are released by 3GPP, Etsy and the ITU. And we've got sort of a, a function that's going on that says, okay, what do we feel to be the most important things that are, that, that are changing and impacting our world of technology? Um, we'll talk about the GSMA Open Gateway on the left-hand side, um, which is enablement of the cloud networks as well. And then we have the uh, GSMA industry community. So we engage with industries in fintech, identity, mobility, digital industries, and aviation. So we talk to the likes of Airbus, we talk to the likes of BMW, uh, we talk to the likes of General Motors, um, et cetera, et cetera, to actually understand what are the needs um, from 5G, from the 5G era, and enablement of enterprises. Um, we also look at uh, GSMA's open infrastructure architectures. There's a significant amount of delayering um, and disaggregation going on. Delayering is where opcos are selling off assets to tower codes and using tower codes as a strategic play to deploy infrastructure into. For example, that's one way of looking at delayering. And the other um, on uh, disaggregation is obviously Open RAN that you all well un understand as virtualization takes hold and the software functions of a base station um, uh, or the functions of a base station become software, become virtualized. And that can be deployed in different architectures rather than just buying a big box. But there are a few things going on to progress the industry in the 5G uh, futures. Millimeter wave, um, US, is, has adopted millimeter wave, showing absolutely brilliant progress on that. Um, but the adoption around the world in devices and equipment is a little bit lacking, so we need to work on that. 5G standalone is the plinth by which virtualization and transformation of our technologies will happen. So how is that going forward? 5G advanced are the new standards coming out in release 18, release 19 from 3GPP, uh, looking at things like uh, improved uplink, um, uh, higher precisioning in location, um, red cap, which is uh, IoT capacity uh, in the networks. So topics like that, how do we make sure that they come to the commercial bearing? 5G new coring is uh, very similar to taking Volti and Vilti and bringing a data layer through IMS in there to actually have a more multimedia fulfillment uh, whilst having a call. And AI for networks is how are our networks now being managed under different levels of control. So what we do is we create communities like this uh, to have a wider audience discussion. Um, we have that through uh, meetings and outreach. We have that through webinars. Um, and we have that through communications that we actually do. So I have a great marketing department that will be in touch very shortly. Um, so 5G is the fastest ever generational technology change. We're already at 1.2 billion 5G devices globally. That's phenomenal. But, you know, 4G didn't do this till about 2017, you know, in, in sort of side, and it's been exponential since then. So the rate of change that we've seen just in three years uh, has absolutely been phenomenal. Is that me or is that the, yeah, that was uh, the system. Um, so we've seen a lot of 5G launches around the world. Um, we've seen 5G fixed wireless access being a major plank. So this is where mobile technology is coming in to deliver services to the home or premises. And we've seen uh, the, planned, the planned SA standalone uh, launches. And it's not, uh, you would try and get them as equal as possible across the different operations and the regions in what's been done. So that's the work we've got to do. Why is fixed wireless accident? Might be on millimeter wave. And why is SA launches not keeping up into space? So there are some technical challenges. And we'll talk about them in the uh, other sessions. But we're also seeing, and, and the part of our first session is to talk about Open Gateway um, and ARPU impacts and how we drive value in the industry. At the moment, there is a good progression and recovery in the ARPU of mobile subscribers. Um, we're seeing single digit growth, but I grew up in an area where it was double digit growth, if not more, uh, in mobile industry. So why aren't we actually capturing that value? 
So consumerism, this chart basically says consumerism is providing some value in 5G. People are paying more for faster speeds in simple terms. The question is, how well are we doing at getting the enterprises and the enterprise solutions out there that 5G was really hailing to actually make that change? We're not really, we're seeing that in small pockets, but we're not seeing that in the growth rates that people were expecting. And that's something we've got to debate and there's something we've got to work out as an industry to say these are the right directions that we need to go. So this is sort of the plan in the GSMA that we, we look at. We'll talk a lot about Open Gateway. Um, we'll talk about SA, Advanced, and Millimeter Wave. And then I mentioned the delayering disaggregation. They're sort of slightly more complicated things to talk about because they're very personal to the telecommunications company, the operators. It's quite personal. But when it does impact um, the technology and the roadmap of that technology, then we need to have a discussion about autonomous networks, uh, self-optimizing networks. Sometimes that needs a level of collaboration. So they're the things we're trying to work out. We're trying to talk to the Tower and Fiber Co. Supply chain to us, we need more vendors, full stop. US is leading the charge in this. Japan is leading the charge on this. Vodafone's picking it up in Europe quite significantly. But is it enough? We need to do more in that uh, sector as these standards are maturing and Open RAN is maturing. And we'll hear in the last section about that. And then edge compute and storage, relatively new, uh, but still exceptionally important, especially when we're going to a service-based architecture and virtualization, we need to store and compute in the right places, not only for our own networks out there, but also the customers that we actually see. So that's me almost up. The last thing is um, we've got our own value pool. It's worth around about $1.2 trillion uh, across globally. But we're going to talk about Open Gateway shortly, which is talking about another value pool, which is somewhat outside of the connectivity value pool. And McKinsey basically said by 2030, that value pool of cloud infrastructure could be worth around about $5 trillion. And there are different approaches operators could take by, by this. We could do products and, uh, you know, we build it uh, in products and services and they will come. And that's a wholesale-based model that you see. And we could hyperscale that. We could sell it to the hyperscalers. Ross is now sweating now. <laughs> what are you going to do? But it's, we're not going to attract that much value. And it might not be good for the value of the ecosystem to actually help. Because everything needs to be connected at the end of the day. It's just how is it connected appropriately. So as you can see here, if we take an outside in approach, get into that production life cycle of what is, um, what's needed to be done. We're all checkout people these days, aren't we? We all go up, get our food, and we scan our food, and then we pay with a credit card. That is us being in the production life of everything. But so, operators need to be in that value chain, need to understand it, how it's changing in the consumer sort of market and drive forward. So this is what we actually drive from in the GSMA, is how do we capitalize on the cloud-driven digital businesses? Last thing I want to say about that, I think I'm 40 seconds over, it's not good for me, um, is that this isn't about competing with the hyperscalers or the aggregators or the, or, or the systems integrators. This is about how can we think about making sure they've got access to capabilities that is going to improve their products. And it's going to be a win-win. That's what we want to position uh, what we're doing and how we're doing it. So that's, thank you very much for listening for me in the um, first 10 minutes. Uh, there's a bit of a QR code about uh, future networks uh, at the GSMA.